I'm the straw hat farmer here at Grow Dinner Aquaponics, and we operate a lot of different aquaponics systems, including some outdoor ponds with some flood and drain beds with some beautiful plants growing behind me. We also have an aquaponics greenhouse, a couple of other ponds, IBC tanks, different systems where we like to test plants and different grow medias and things of that nature. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk with you how to build a trouble-free siphon system for your flood and drain beds. Now this is a system that we use in our class here at Grow Dinner Aquaponics. Basically, I have a tote here that's going to serve as our fish tank. It's got a rubber ducky in it so you can watch the level of the water moving up and down. This is going to serve as our grow bed, which will actually be where your grow medium plants are growing. And this is going to just kind of break this down and kind of take a look at it uh, so we can get a clear understanding of how it works and some little tricks that I found over a period of time that helps it work better. Okay, this is going to start out being our guard. This is what's going to actually slide over the whole entire thing. This is going to keep your grow media from getting in there. Now you just, it's a four inch piece of PVC pipe. I lay it in a chop saw and I chop some slots in here. Now if you don't have a chop saw or don't want to use a hand saw to cut these, you can easily drill holes. Holes will work fine as long as the holes are big enough to allow water flow, but not too big that your grow media can wash through it and stock up, stop up your system. Now, set this to the side for a second. Let's break down the actual pressure chamber of what makes all this work. Now, lots of people refer to this as the bell cipher. I've been ringing this thing for a while, and there's no one brought me coffee, so I'm not sure where the bell comes from. I actually call this my pressure chamber. Now, the pressure chamber can be uh, cut in a couple of different methods. I like to do the slots just because I have a chop saw. It's easy for me. I can lay it in there and slot it. Some people prefer to do a tooth method. That's perfectly fine, too. It's a little harder to do. You have to break it out. It's kind of like a jack-o'-lantern tooth. But this works perfectly fine, it's a lot easier, a couple slots. Now this is an important feature here, this is called the snorkel tube. Now the snorkel tube uh, actually helps it break siphon. How I do this is I actually install this fitting in this snorkel tube before I ever slide the cap on. That way I can remove the cap if I need to and actually cut from this in if I want to adjust. So the actual fitting here doesn't go through the pipe, it only goes through the cap. It has a little bit of silicone caulking, and I only use the aquarium caulk so this fish approved. Now next we'll have, and also I have a little trick for this that I've been using for quite some time. I'll show that to you later. Now this is your upright stand. Your upright stand actually determines your water depth inside your bed. Now I like to keep my water depth about an inch below my grow medium. And the reason for that is that will keep algae from building up, plus it will help your plants from not getting a little more, a little fungus and a little rot around the grow media. So you want to cut this at an inch uh, below your grow media, and then you can adjust it from there until you find the exact height you want to be. Now one thing I don't like to do is stick these in the bed and sit there and judge it just because of the water runs over here. That doesn't always work that way because remember we're working with a pressure chamber. So you'll probably have to adjust it with this on here, move your grow media back, watch it, see if you need to cut it shorter or make it longer. Now in the very bottom of the upright stand, we have a bulkhead fitting so that this easily slides in and out for adjustments. And I don't really glue any of this stuff together. Okay, the size of your drain, the size of your drain at least, at least twice the size of your intake size of your pressure chamber along with your drain should be two to one. If you're using a half inch pipe, it should be a one inch. If you're using three quarter, it should be an inch and a half and so on. And that seems to be a good ratio for the pressure from what I found. Now let's put this in here. Our upright pipe goes back in here. I'm going to turn it this way so you can kind of watch the snorkel. Then we're going to slide this back on top. It's real simple. Just lay it in there. Your drain coming from underneath needs to be larger than what your water intake is because you don't want to outrun your drain. So there again, two or three to one on your drain. If you've got a one inch, the square what your water flow is, the bigger your bed, the more water flow you're going to have, which will be the bigger the drain. Now to make this work, if we pull this completely loose and just let it drain back, say, into an IBC tank, it would not be very efficient. 
because we wouldn't create a siphon. So we want to try to get at least 12 inches with an elbow. I like 24 inches better, but 12 inches will work before you turn down. And the reason for that is this pipe here actually creates more of a siphon. It helps the system work much more efficient. So I have my small pump here. It's down in my ducky tank today, but this actually would be serving as our fish tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove our guard, and I'm going to show you how this actually works. So let's turn this thing on and see. <clears throat> Okay, let's take an in-depth look at what's making all this work, okay? It's a really simple process. Basically, the water flow is continuous. It never stops flowing. Now, this is a really strong water flow for such a small system. But see, I like that because sometimes in July and August, when you get into those 95 and 100 degree days, you want a very quick cycle so that your roots don't start to dry and your plants get weak. Now here we have started it right back up again. See, it's continuous. It's only taking a couple of seconds, and we're filling up and draining through and emptying out. So let's figure out what actually makes this cypher system work. Now basically, the actual water pressure is building up inside this pressure chamber. And as it pressures inside the cap area here, then it forces the water down and it comes out at the bottom. Now once it reaches the bottom of our snorkel, the snorkel will actually break the cypher. The lower your snorkel tube is, the lower your water level will be inside the bed. Now, I typically like to have my water depth inside the bed somewhere around an inch to an inch and a half, but that's up to each individual. So a lot of it depends on the depth of your bed and what you've got to work with. If you have a shallow bed, then I like to drain it a little less. If you have a nice deep bed, I like to leave about an inch to an inch and a half in there. And here we go. We're filling up now. As you can see, the water doesn't come all the way to the very top of the snorkel. Once it reaches the top of that pipe, it exceeds the top of the upright pipe a little bit. Then the pressure kicks in and starts to lower the water. And if you can see in the snorkel, there's actually water going up the snorkel right now. But as soon as it reaches the bottom where that snorkel can get air, it's going to break. There goes your bubbles, it's all over. The cypher's now broke. As that fills up, you're going to lose some water in here. You're not going to lose as much as you think because you'd have gravel. Okay, here it goes. Our system is right making it cycle. Okay? Now, water flow is very important in a system to try to keep it from hanging up and a few other things also. But one of the things is water flow. If you don't have enough water flow, typically it'll hang up with the bed completely full of water and the same amount of water will start running out that's running in. That tells me normally there's not enough water flow. If it hangs up in the very bottom of the bed, most of the time it comes down to two things. You didn't get a really good clean siphon on the beginning of the, of the drain, or you have too much water flow. Well now I've figured out a way to help solve the too much water flow by a simple little trick, and I found this quite some time back, and it's worked for me for a long time. If you run a really heavy pump in the summertime, which I do, I like to really increase my water pressure in the heat of the summer if I'm having 90 degree days. Then what I do is I take a Tynanol or an Advil bottle and I slide it on the bottom. And you can cut this bottle to actually fit the depth of what you want the bed back again there. And just zip tie it to it. You can slide it up and down on there. And now what happens is when you're really flooding your bed with a lot of water pressure, the snorkel tube only has to suck out the water inside the, the bottle instead of having to get down low enough to actually suck from the air from the outside. 
then that really does create a trouble-free bell siphon because of the fact when it gets to the bottom, that is the one place you do not want your siphon system to hang up. This pressure chamber needs to empty that bed to start to fill back up immediately because if it hangs up in the bottom, we all know what's going to happen. The plants are not going to get enough moisture, and then at that point they're going to start to wilt and die. Okay, let's watch it work with the bottle on there, and I think you'll see that it does work very efficient. Okay, let's watch it run a few cycles. Zoom in here, and let's take a look so you can actually see more water moving around. And there. You can adjust this by the snorkel tube in the bottle. The lower that is, then the lower the water level is going to be in your bed. I like about an inch of water left in my bed that never gets removed. Okay, we're almost full again. Here we go. That's a pretty fast start. It actually is moving so fast I can actually see the drain pipe vibrating a little bit. So that means we've actually created an extremely strong suction going out, which means we'll have a good clean break at the end. You can see the water pressure now. It's pushing it up in our pressure chamber and taking it straight out. There you go. It's a good clean start and a good clean break, and that's what we want, especially in the hot summers. All you do then is install your guard, and you're ready to fill it full of grow media and start growing plants. And thanks for joining us here at our urban farm, and be sure to watch some of our other videos and subscribe to some of our videos and share them with your friends if you like them. And I hope you have success with my trouble-free ciphering system here that I've used for several years, and it's worked great for us, and I hope it works good for you.